Hello, my name is Caitlin and in this week's video I'm going to show how I brought my nippy young stud colt from this to this. As I'm filming this, I'm realizing how many gray sweaters I own. I swear, I don't wear the same sweater for every video. I just own a lot, a lot of gray sweaters. So today I wanna to talk about why I switched to positive reinforcement or clicker training as a training method and the steps that it took me to get there. Before I get into that though, I should clarify that I don't train using pure positive reinforcement. Like I don't use positive reinforcement for everything, but I try to incorporate it into everything that I do with Merlin. Even if the basis of the training is more traditional pressure and release or what we call negative reinforcement. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty of exactly what positive reinforcement is and how you do it. I'm not a professional horse trainer by any means and there are already so many incredible resources out there but instead this video is going to be sort of the start of a series that I want to do about my journey with positive reinforcement and how it really helped to curb some of the stud behaviors that Merlin started exhibiting in the months before he was gelded. If you're interested in getting into positive reinforcement or are curious about what it entails like I said there are so many incredible resources out there. I'm going to link some of them down below. So how did I get here? How did I start clicker training my horse? Clicker training horses is a notion that a lot of people view as ridiculous and very sort of floofy and for pansies and tree huggers and people will call you all kinds of names for wanting to take the emotions and choices of your horse into account in their training. Something that I've realized over the last year and a bit that I've been doing it. Actually no it hasn't even been a year, it's almost been a year since I started incorporating it into my training. As I mentioned in my very first video, I originally turned to positive reinforcement as a way to positively manage some stud behaviors that Merlin was exhibiting. All things considered, he was a very, very mannerly and well-behaved young colt, considering that until he was gelded just before he turned two, he was out in a field with mares, never showed interest. If anything, they were the reason why he was such a well-behaved young man because they were not afraid of telling him where to go and how to get there when he was getting on their nerves, which as you can imagine was often. But the behaviors I did need help or a new way of thinking to manage was the mouthiness, the nippiness that often comes with young intact studs as they reach sexual maturity. So he had been nippy-ish for a couple of months. But in February of 2021, it got quite bad to the point where I didn't really want to work with him anymore. Every time I brought him out into the arena to do groundwork, he would just turn back and bite me. And I tried every single thing that I had been taught to do. I Googled things. I tried everything. I used a stud chain. I used a rope halter. I carried a dressage whip with me. And when I would see his face turning towards me, I would just hold the dressage whip up in between my face and his or my body and his, not hitting him with it, just sort of holding it up as a barrier. Nothing worked. If anything, the things that I was trying to do or had been taught to do through traditional training growing up just aggravated it. Luckily for me, I do have some footage of one such training session that will exhibit exactly what I was dealing with before I started using positive reinforcement. For this first session, was on February 13th, um, a little over a year ago now. And I have very distinct memories of this being the session that made me like desperate, like really, really desperate to try something new because it was very visible to me that what I was doing wasn't working. It was confusing him. It was aggravating the behavior and making it worse. And it was making the time that I spent with my horse unenjoyable. And in hindsight, it was also making the time that he spent with me unenjoyable, which is not how you want your horse to be feeling about you. So I would tend to start nearly every session just by letting him loose so that he could get some energy out because he was very energetic at this point. So I would let him have a little trot or canter around and then once he had chilled out and had gotten rid of his beans, then we would get to work on whatever I wanted to work on that day.
And I just want to be fully transparent in saying that I'm quite nervous to post this footage because it's very raw and very real. In it, I use some methods that I would never use today, but I feel like in order to properly show what I was dealing with before I switched to positive reinforcement, I need to show this footage. So as you saw in the previous clip, he had turned around and nipped me and he continued to do that. So I thought that it would be an absolutely fabulous idea to deal with that by leading him around by holding onto the halter, hoping that this would make him understand that if I let him this way, he couldn't nip. Now, in hindsight, the only thing that this did was aggravate him even further and make him feel trapped because when you lead a horse around by the halter, they don't even have the slack of the lead rope to diminish the pressure on their face. Here, I've put the lead rope on and I'm just trying to get him to walk in a circle without trying to nip me. And as you can see, it's not working very well. And I'm also making the mistake of not rewarding it when he does well. So here, he stops, he doesn't turn back and bite me and I don't reward him at all. I just move on without acknowledging that he did well. The next time I try to stop him, he turns back and tries to bite. Cool. Again, here he did exactly what I asked him to do and I didn't acknowledge it at all. It's obvious to me now that by the tone of my voice in these clips that I was getting aggravated, which as a result was aggravating him, and it resulted in behavior like this, trying to get him to stop, and then he just reaches back and bites me, and which, you know, makes me more angry, and it just escalates the situation more and more and more. As soon as you get one circle, we can go in. Yeah. So what I've just said in that clip, as soon as you get one circle, you can go in, is really, really interesting to me because I think it's a really good example of how my mentality towards training in the last year has changed. Let me explain. Like many equestrians, I was trying to find a quote unquote good note to end on so that we could finish the training session on a place that was favorable to my goals. What I didn't realize at the time is that this mentality just upped the level of pressure that I was putting on myself and him, upped the tension so that every time he exhibited the behavior that I was trying to get him to stop uh, exhibiting, I got even more angry and frustrated and upset, which in turn made him even more angry, frustrated and upset. It was a, you know, a lose-lose situation for everybody. I would have been much better off lowering my criteria and stopping the session the moment that he halted without turning back into my space. And it would have been a much more positive and much more reinforcing experience for him and a much more enjoyable experience for me. Okay, boring rant over. After that training session in mid-February, by pure coincidence, I didn't really work with Merlin for a couple of weeks, which for me actually ended up being a really good thing because I used that time to look into other methods and decided to give positive reinforcement a try. I'd become aware of it and did a little bit of research on how to teach what they call manners or the rules of the game, which is basically just teaching the horse that they don't get rewards when they're in your space. So it's a very good way of teaching the the horse that being out of your space is a very good place to be. So I started to give it a try, but as you're going to see when I go through the clips from the next session, I didn't do enough research on the proper way to do positive reinforcement before I started. So I asked way too much. The session was way too long. I think the video that I have is just under 30 minutes, which is way too long, especially for such a young horse. And I gave really confusing signals because I was using positive reinforcement while also using negative reinforcement. It was a good start, but definitely lots of room for improvement. And as you'll see in my voiceover, I'm heavily critical of everything that I'm doing. So here he is loose and I'm trying to get him to walk alongside me while staying out of my space. And as you can see, it is working, but in my hand, I have a dressage whip and I'm just putting it in between my body and his as a way of keeping him out. So this isn't really proper positive reinforcement because I'm using an aversive to create the behavior that I want. 
Anytime he hints that he's going to get into my space, I hold the lunge whip out and then reward him for staying out of my space when I do that, but I'm not really teaching it to him in the way that is most easily understandable for horses. I mentioned earlier that I definitely asked too much too soon in this session, and this is a prime example of exactly that. I'm trying to get him to back up when I should have put the main focus of this session on just getting him to walk next to me while staying out of my space. Asking too much at once is a really easy way to confuse the horse and to make them frustrated. This clip shows me finally turning to what should have been my main goal for the session in the first place, which is just to stand by his shoulder and to reward him every time that his head goes into the center of his chest. One of the most important things that I learned early on in positive reinforcement is to be consistent about where you're feeding the horse. So if you want them to stay out of your space, never feed them in your space. You're meant to feed them in the center of their chest so that they know that that is where they get food. Good job. Something I'm noticing as I rewatch these clips for the first time in a long time is that the tone in my voice and my entire demeanor from the previous session is completely different. I'm so much more relaxed and as a result he's so much more relaxed. Something I will say is that in these early sessions, my timing is absolutely terrible. I should have clicked and treated the moment that his head was in the center of his chest rather than waiting a second or two like you often see me do. If I would have been more clear with marking the correct behavior, I probably would have made progress a lot quicker than I did in these early sessions, which is saying something because he does pick it up really quickly. I'm just saying that had I been a little more clear and on point with marking the instant he offered me the correct behavior, there would have been less room for error on his part. This is a fantastic example. I should have been clicking right here and instead I wait way too long. I make the huge mistake of loading my hand with the treat before I click, which in itself can become a marker or reinforcer for the horse and make them turn back to mug you. So it can often lead to the exact opposite of what you're trying to teach them to do. And of course, rather than ending there on a really good note, I had to be greedy and ask way more of him than I should have by doing probably another 10 or 15 minutes in hand work with the lead rope. So it's very obvious in those clips that there was some improvement, there was some definite improvement from that session that made me desperate to change, to find something different. I think I realized in the hours after that session as I was watching back the video that I was being very confusing to Merlin and like I'm very wont to do, I jumped into something super excited to try it without fully understanding the proper way to do it. That is a very Caitlin characteristic. I'm all willing to give something a try, but quite often I don't take the time to really immerse myself in it properly before giving it a try. Some things that works, but with horse training, it's good to do some learning before you start. After this session, I took a few days and immersed myself completely in learning how to do the basic behavior. All I was trying to learn how to do was the proper way to teach manners. I wasn't trying to learn every single thing about positive reinforcement that I could learn. I just wanted to learn how to properly teach a horse to stay out of your space using a rewards-based method of training. And that is something I should have done from the start. I should not have started before I understood the proper way to use it. Unfortunately, when it's used incorrectly or hastily, you get the situations that traditional trainers or punishment-based trainers use as reasons why clicker training doesn't work for horses. And once I understood the proper way of teaching manners, I realized very quickly that Merlin learns incredibly fast with this training method. It blew my mind how quickly he was picking up some of the behaviors that I was teaching him. And that realization in hindsight doesn't come as a shock. Because with positive reinforcement, you're giving the horse very clear parameters within which to work. Rather than punishing the behavior that you don't want without giving them an idea of when they do well, you are very clearly marking every instance of the behavior that you do want and reinforcing the exhibition of that behavior with a reward that motivates them to continue. And as a result, they learn very quickly that, oh, if I do this thing, I get something that I like 
very much. The next clips that you're going to see are from two sessions in mid-March after I started teaching him manners properly. There are still some things I would change, but I'm still quite happy with the changes that I made in the way that I was going about teaching him how to stay out of my space. So as you can see, my timing is still quite slow, but I've done away with trying to do multiple things in one session and I've literally just gone out to the paddock and am working on manners with him. I think you can tell that as I go through this session, my timing starts to get better and as a result, he starts to stay out of my space more consistently. That effort there was really good because he thought about coming into my space and then thought better of it and kept his head in the middle of his chest. He is so freaking cute here because you can see in the way that he's holding his head that he really wants to come into my space to ask for a treat, but knows he's not supposed to. I can promise you that this was as boring to edit as it is to watch, but I think it's really important to show as many different iterations of me practicing the behavior with him as I can to show that it doesn't go right every time, but the main thing you need to remember to do is to reward the trying. And like I do here, I think it's really important to almost overemphasize when they do something really, really good so they know that, oh, okay, that was a really good effort and I should try to do that again. So this is a few days later and as you can see there is a huge difference. He's not coming into my space nearly as much. I think in the whole sort of 10 minute video he only comes into my space once or twice and he stands completely still, not moving. I'm able to move from one side to the other and as I go to the other side he doesn't come into my space like you see there. He came into my space but that's okay. Because he's not biting me, I just ignore it and wait for him to move his head into the center of his chest. And as you can see, towards the end of the session, I'm able to go from side to side and he keeps his head in the center of his chest. So as I showed in this video, I came to positive reinforcement in a similar way that many people do. I had a prevalent issue with my horse that was affecting my ability to handle him effectively and safely. I tried all of the methods that I had been taught in the past, punishment-based methods, negative reinforcement, and none of them worked. Like I said earlier, if anything, it made the behaviors way, way worse. I was desperate and willing to try anything, so I tried something that is like way outside of the box of anything I had ever tried before, and it ended up being exactly what I needed. I will admit, I started with a bit of doubt in my mind. I tried to be as open-minded as possible, but there was some like sort of niggling doubts in the back of my mind, but I was willing to try and I was very surprised at how quickly it helped the issues that I was trying to address. I'm not gonna stand here and say that Merlin's mouthiness stopped 100% because it didn't. It would be impossible for it to stop completely because he was just exhibiting natural behaviors that were exacerbated by hormones that were raging in his body. So I couldn't get mad at him for that, but it did help to make him come to the realization that being out of my space was a much better and more rewarding place to be than being in my space, mugging for treats or trying to bite. And I think it's a safe estimate to say that his mouthiness went down by about 85, 80 to 85%, which I think is pretty significant. So the point of this video has not been for me to stand on a soapbox and say that my method of training is better than yours and then it's more effective and blah 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 blah. But factually speaking, according to the science, rewards-based training is the most effective way to teach horses new behaviors and it's something that I'm realizing more and more as I go through trying to teach Merlin new tricks, new behaviors, and I'm now incorporating it into basically everything that I do with him. I think my move to positive reinforcement was very organic. The current coach is not just about the way that we learn as people, but also about making the experience of riding and training as pleasant for the horse as possible. So riding with her sort of started to change the way that I think about horses as animals and my relationship with them. And I think turning to positive reinforcement to work with Merlin when he was still a stallion was a natural progression from there. And as a result, like also happens with a lot of people who turn to this method of training, I've started to recognize issues in my own training in the past. I've come to feel a deep sense of shame for the way that I treated 
horses in the past, um, you know, my first pony, my second pony, some of the equipment that we used, while also recognizing that I treated them that way because that was the way I was taught to treat them. And I think one of the most important issues in the horse industry right now is we have an incredible opportunity to change our understanding of horses as riding animals, as sport animals, and to use that change to influence the way that future equestrians are brought up. Because unfortunately, you know, me coming to this realization on my own is going to have an effect on the way that I deal with horses. It's not really going to have an effect on the way that other people view their relationships with their horses. So if we want people to treat horses more fairly and ethically and according to, you know, the way that horses learn, then we have to really change the way that we teach young equestrians about riding, but also about horse care, horse welfare, and things like that. And this sort of awakening that I've had in the last few years also means that I have a lot of different issues and concerns that I want to talk about in future videos and they're all topics that I'm really really excited to get into but they will require some reading and research which I'm also excited about. But yeah that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching it. I hoped it helped you to understand why I switched to positive reinforcement and how it's been such a wonderful wonderful tool for me to have in my pocket but also has really improved my relationship with my horse. Yes, you know, Merlin is an incredibly sweet and inquisitive horse. He naturally will walk up to anyone who comes to see him. Since I switched to positive reinforcement, he actively will walk and trot and greet me at the gate as soon as he sees me coming. Most of the time, I don't even have to call his name. He just comes and sees me because he's excited to go to work and he's excited about the fact that being with me means that he gets scratches, he gets kisses, he gets, you know, some nice grooming and he gets some treats. So I have no idea what happened to the end of that footage, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you very soon. Bye.